Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Advanced Level Test Management Certification. We are in Chapter 1 talking about managing the test activities and we are still in the first topic that is 1.1 the test process and we shall be covering the last subsegment of this that is 1.1.3 the test completion activities and we'll certainly talk about one of the last activities what takes place as a part of the project to understand how the test manager takes care of it. Well, to begin with, let's recall, as a part of the foundation, we already told you that the test completion activities are one of the manager activities which are taken place as a part of the life cycle of testing. And here we complete those remaining activities which are done at the end of the project. At the same time, uh, we indeed look forward to things like, uh, you know, what uh, we could not complete during the project. Uh, certainly agreed mutually between the business and the, the development organization that we might be doing this later uh, probably in terms of updates upgrades but yet documenting them becomes very crucial and important so there are many such activities which are performed as a post closure activities uh, that may not be performing an act but um, certainly more about uh, gathering information or signing off on the projects but several activities which certainly take place here so let's quickly check it out that what are the major activities we are interested in understanding at this point of time so number one of course the test completion uh, usually occurs at the project milestones uh, for any unresolved effects change requests or product backlog items they are created so any kind of documentation, we just look forward to capture them. Uh, once exit criteria are met, the key output should be captured, achieved, and provided to the relevant stakeholders. The test completion requires the following task, and in that, the very first one is create and approve the test completion report. Now, uh, when we talk about the test completion report, it is one of the major and most important documentation as a part of the life cycle. In terms of definition, we pretty much say that the test completion report is a summary of overall activities which were conducted as a part of the testing life cycle in order to achieve the goal and aim of testing. So it may also be said that this report basically describes on a high level that how the team worked upon the testing altogether for this particular product and what exactly were the activities which resulted into definition of quality of the product. So we may talk on a high level that what exactly the test cases were written, like what kind of test cases were executed, how many of them passed, how many of them failed, the failed ones do not have a high priority defects, so how many defects we got, how many defects are currently open, and the one which are open uh, are not P1, P2, at the same time the deferred defects are agreed to be fixed result uh, in a later uh, version like update or upgrade and we will be fixing them in a target version and similarly they describe every single thing that what kind of methods what kind of techniques we should uh, we have used in order to make sure that the uh, defect detection was really good and the, the remaining defects are sufficiently low and even if any defect occurs in the real world in production it may not be having a you know, critical failure and etc so we just like more of like confidence however we cannot write this in hard-coded statement but by writing this test completion report we are basically describing that how exactly the team has put their effort to make sure that this product does not fail into the market so that's where we create and get it approved right so in this phase the manager will create and approve this particular report taking that all the information furnished are complete in all manners in some organization the same report is referred to as test summary report as well the second important activity which we do is archive our testware so we generally have a practice of not deleting things which we have created as a part of the entire life cycle because we always see this as a potential knowledge information or knowledge base and that is where we try to so archive everything which is for either feature reuse or second important thing is of course to pass on the, to the maintenance team. Do not forget that once the product goes live, there is a dedicated team, maintenance team, which will be taking care of the product thereafter. And they might be reusing our artifacts as a part of their testing journey, which is maintenance testing. 
And that is where we are archive every single test where. Not only that, the third potential reason could be also to be said that if we come across similar kind of projects down the line, then we may have to refer this project as a baseline to define our definitions and objectives and goals, or maybe estimations as well for the upcoming project. So this plays a very vital role, thus we do not look forward to discard any of the artifacts which we use. Uh, either we store them for future reuse, or at least to hand over to the maintenance team. Further to add here, of course, the next set of activity we include is handover of testware, which I think we just discussed for a moment back. We may always hand over this to the other stakeholders. Uh, it might be the maintenance team or even the technical support team. The technical support team generally means here is the team involved in writing technical documentation for the product, or if it is a system application, then we may have uh, talking about the help option or maybe any kind of guidelines to be created. The, the test cases and test artifacts plays a very vital role in defining the user manual also. So handing over the testware to the next team could be of another activity which we do here. And uh, we assure that at this point during the test completion phase, we have handed it over to them. The next activity here is to talk about the perform all necessary tasks to clean the test environment and to restore it to a predefined site. Now this task basically ensures that the test environment is ready for the next testing cycle. Our project, if it involves removing any test data, test tools, test drivers, test dubs, or test script <clears throat> from the test environment, we should do that. It also involves restoring the test environment to its original or desired state. However, this uh, task may look a little tricky to understand that do we really have to do at the end of the project for what? At the end of the project, uh, we might have used something which we consistently use, right? Maybe a lab which we occupied for performing different activities. So more of like a cleanup activity to reset everything back to the uh, default is another responsibility for us because sometimes these com labs are very commonly used by other people. So we just don't discard the equipments. We reset or put them back to the original state. Not only that, cleaning up also can involve those test accounts which you created. A simple security threat to many of the organization happens just because of these test accounts if the same product goes live into the market and we forget to delete the test accounts which we created. So as a part of this, let's not see this activity as just like cleaning up in terms of removing the data, removing this tab or other things. We also talk about deleting those accounts which are no, long, no longer will be used in the production environment. So all those activities which are related to environment should also be conducted at this point of time and should be stated in a document that this was done and we are clear with that, right? It's all set up. And the final activity is of course to perform, collect, document, lessons learned. So indeed, uh, we do understand lessons learned session is more of like our retrospective. So uh, in agile methodologies, we do it uh, every, at the end of every single sprint, whereas in traditional models, we used to do it once at the project ends. So uh, it's pretty much the same objective. The team used to sit together, sit, 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 sit together and try to understand that what we could have done better, what we could have prevented, and how exactly we uh, got deviated from the plan, uh, what exactly we could have done to avoid that, and what was the corrective action taken next time this corrective action could be a part of our plan. So manager sit, sits down with the team in order to collect this information, perform the retrospective, and gather or record this in a way that it can be referable. And most important thing, conducting retrospective is not a big deal but following up in the info, on the informa information collected is very crucial. The team should really be careful that how exactly this information would add more value to their overall process improvement and what kind of uh, information can really improve their day of, way of working down the line. So this is the objective of conducting retrospective and we should always stick to the agenda and at the same time should gather every single information which you think could be a potential help to do the better work. So that's pretty much what we have here and uh, we have discussed uh, this downline in uh, 1.5 in more detail that what exactly test process improvement is. So you can kind of like uh, stay tuned for that. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.
Thank you.